Welcome to lecture 16 of financial risk management. In previous few lectures, we discussed about determining the forward and future prices. So we are going to continue and this is the last lecture in the series of uh, lectures that we, we, where we have discussed the determination of forward and future price. So moving towards the contents, previously we, we saw that uh, we have investment asset and we have consumption asset and within the uh, investment assets we have income paying and non-income paying investment asset. We have already covered uh, how to find the intrinsic or uh, intrinsic value of the investment or uh, income paying or non-income paying investment asset. In this video we are going to specifically cover how to find the intrinsic value of the uh, forward value of the consumption asset. And then we are going to uh, see what if instead of continuous compounding we are given a compounding uh, annual compounding or any other uh, frequency of compounding how do we convert that into continuous compounding because in our formulas of determining the forward and future price we need continuous compounding. Uh, so, we, so, we are going to look how to uh, convert different compounding frequencies into uh, continuous compounding. So, starting with, uh, with the basic idea, uh, the formula is uh, F naught or the intrinsic value is equal to S naught, the current stock price plus uh, U and U stands for the present value of all the storage costs. So, whatever the storage cost is, whether there, uh, there is multiple storage costs during the uh, maturity of the or, uh, or the time period at which the stock is uh, or the asset is being held. Uh, we need to find the present value of all those storage costs and then uh, the sum of these two would be multiplied with uh, E which is constant uh, the, the, the value is 2.71 raised to power RT. So, if uh, storage cost is proportional that is in percentage rather than in price in this case we have the storage uh, cost in terms of dollars or rupees then we are going to add that into our S naught but what if the storage cost is in terms of percentage as we saw with, uh, with income paying investment assets if we had uh, the income in terms of dollars then uh, which was denoted as I then we would find the present value and deduct it from the spot price and if uh, the income was given in terms of uh, percentage we would denote it by Q and instead of deducting it from S naught we would minus it or deduct it from uh, from the risk free rate. So the similar concept would apply here if storage cost is in terms of percentage then rather uh, than adding it to this S naught we would add it to the risk free rate. So the formula would be S naught into E raised to power R plus U which is the uh, storage cost into T the time to maturity. Okay, so let us have an example. Consider a one year future contract on gold, the asset underlying the contract is gold. Suppose that it costs $2 per ounce to store the gold. So the cost is $2, the storage cost is $2, this, is, uh, this, is, this isn't our U, we need to find the present value of this $2. With the payment being made at the end of the year, assume that the spot price is $450 and the risk free rate is 7% per annum for maturity. Now you need to understand this. See this spot price, uh, this belong to uh, which time period? It belongs to today, this time period, right? This 450. Whereas this $2 would be paid at the end of the year, at uh, this time period. So, so what we need to do is to uh, to deduct this storage cost from the spot price, we need to bring it back to this time period, time zero. Uh, in short, we need to find the present value of this $2, this storage cost. 
So the corresponding values we have is R is 0 0.07 because 7% uh, uh, we convert into uh, decimal we divide it by 100 we have 0 0.07 as naught is 450 and T is 1 year or uh, that is 12 by 12 if okay so uh, how do you solve it we first need to find the present value of the storage cost and this normally we find the present value by dividing uh, the future value divided by r raised to power n that is the formula that we use or what we can do is we can write it like this and that is present value into 1 plus r raised to power minus n so whether you use this formula to find the present value or you use this formula to find the present value, they both are correct, they both give you the same answer. But this is when we have annual compounding, right? Or compounding at any different frequency. What if we have continuous compounding and remember from the start of this, uh, this topic, we are continuously focusing on the term E and we are saying that for um, for forward and future price, we use continuous compounding instead of uh, uh, non-continuous or annual compounding. So what we do is instead of writing it in this form, we can write it as uh, two divided by e raised to power r t, or if we write it in this way, then that would be two into e raised to power minus r Right. So this is what we have done. Uh, this is how we have written it. You can see uh, 2 into e raised to power uh, minus r into t. So t was 1 and r was 0 0.07. We get the present value of the storage cost as 1.865. We put that into our formula which is uh, S0 plus the storage present value of storage cost into e raised to power rt. So 450 as naught is 450 we just got the value of u which is 1.865. We, we have the value of e we can either use 2.71 or we can use the uh, the alpha um, and the, uh, the exponent uh, button in our uh, calculator which would be uh, adjacent to the decimal point uh, button that you have in your calculator. So anyhow, uh, raised to power r uh, into t, so we get the f naught as 484, so the intrinsic value in the case of this asset is uh, forward value is 484, so these strategies are again same, we can follow those strategies. So what if instead of having continuous compounding what if instead of this you know in this question we have been given this 7% as continuous compounding it isn't mentioned here but anyhow it is continuous compounding what if this rate was given uh, as an annual compounding so we need to convert that annual compounding rate into continuous compounding first and then we can use that into uh, the, the formula previously we have seen. So we need to convert a rate with continuous frequency of m times per annum to a continuous compounding rate. So the formula is r continuous that is the, the continuous compounding uh, rate respiratory rate is equal to m, m is the frequency of compounding, so if uh, we have semi-annual compounding then m would be 2, if we have quarterly compounding m would be 4, if we have monthly compounding m would be 12 and you get the idea. This ln stands for natural logarithm, uh, 1 plus rm, this is the quoted rate of annual compounding that we would be given and this m is again the frequency of compounding. Let's have an example and then we would be better able to understand it. Consider an interest rate that is quoted at 10% per annum. Now you would see that this interest rate 
is not RC. That is, this interest rate is not continuously compounding interest rate. We first need to convert this interest rate, which let's call it RM. It is not RC, so it is RM into continuous compounding. So how do we convert this RM into RC using this formula? Okay, so continuing with the example, consider an interest rate that is quoted at 10% uh, per annum with semi-annual compounding. What will uh, the equivalent rate be uh, in case of continuous compounding? So we need to find RC. So how do we find, we have the formula. We plug the values, uh, m is 2 because we just saw that uh, it is continuous compounding. So when we have continuous compounding, the m uh, would be 2, when we have quarterly, m would be 4 and so on and so forth. Uh, natural log, 1 plus rm was given as 0 0.10 or 10% in the previous question. Uh, this one, this rate. Okay. Divided by 2, which is again m, we get, uh, we solve the bracket, then we get 1.05. So, we can use 2 ln uh, 1.05. Remember to use 1.05 in bracket after natural log. Uh, okay. So, we get an answer of 0 0.097 or 9.7%. So, what does this 9.7% mean? It means that a, an interest rate of 10% per annum semi-annual compounding is equal to an interest of uh, a rate of 9.7% of continuous compounding. So, 10% of semi-annual compounding is equivalent to uh, 9.7 percent of uh, continuous compounding. So, you get the idea. There is one more case. Instead, uh, if instead of uh, having a continuous, uh, instead of having an annual compounding, what if we are giving continuous compounding and we need it to convert into annual compounding? Although these, uh, this is not required in our these questions of determining the forward or future price, but anyhow, just to give you an idea. So, we convert a rate with continuous compounding to compounding frequency of m times, we use this formula. So, now instead of uh, finding R, see we need to find Rm, right. So, uh, okay. So, suppose that a lender quotes the interest rate of 8% per annum with continuous compounding and that interest is actually paid uh, quarterly. So, we need to convert into Rm that because it is quarterly m would be 4 e raised to power Rc divided by 4 minus 1 which we get an answer of 8.04 right. So, 8.04 uh, quarterly compounding interest rate or uh, exactly 8% of continuous compounding are equivalent. But anyhow, we do not need normally need uh, this formula for this topic. Uh, I just want to give you an idea. We would, uh, we would normally use uh, this one for these uh, determining the forward and future price questions. So, just in case, normally in all the previous questions, whenever we solved, we had been explicitly given a continuous compounding interest rate. It was mentioned that it is a continuously compounding interest rate, but if in case it isn't mentioned or it uh, or the rate is Rm instead of Rc, that is compounded at different frequency rather than uh, continuously compounding interest rate, then we need to use this formula to convert Rm into Rc. Okay, so last uh, topic of this uh, chapter is uh, backwardation and contang. So these are two concepts. We are just going to define these concepts. There are further details that we will not cover in uh, in this uh, subject. 
but uh, i just want to give you an idea of what backwardation and contango is backwardation is a situation in which the spot price of a commodity is higher than the forward price so if in case today's market price is higher than the future price it is not future spot price is the future price the price of the future contract or forward contract in that case we would say that we have back backwardation so just in case uh, if a asset is being sold in the open market at 150 rupees per unit and the same asset have a future contract uh, being sold in uh, say pakistan stock pakistan uh, mercantile exchange so this is gold uh, it is 150 dollar per ounce say it is being sold at say 160 dollar per ounce then that means we have uh, this concept would be called backwardation so we have backwardation in in the gold prices contango is uh, opposite of backwardation in contango the spot price is less than the future price so if in case an asset is being sold currently in market at uh, 100 and the forward price is uh, say 160 i previously mistakenly wrote 160 uh, read it as uh, as 140 right okay so because the spot price is higher than the forward price so uh, in that case when we we have a spot price lesser than the future price and that would be called uh, contango so this is the concept that i wanted you to uh, to introduce last is uh, are the sum of the assumptions that we have uh, when we find the intrinsic value of a forward price then these are the assumptions that we make these models make these assumptions we have same tax rate for all net profits so the tax rate are same irrespective of the uh, net profits so there are there are not different slabs this is the assumption then the lending and the borrowing rate are also same the risk free rate that we had been considering are same then uh, there is no transaction cost and there is no short sale restriction remember uh, we we developed our idea of short sales so there is no short sale restriction we we always have availability to enter into short sale and the arbitrager is willing and as well as have the ability to exploit uh, the arbitrage opportunity as soon as it arises so these are some assumptions that uh, that are made by these uh, these models that we have just discussed so in future videos we will try to uh, we have covered the idea of forward and future price uh, pricing we will try to uh, initiate the concept of option pricing